Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our Matzilla Wraith Class 3 style build. Uh, as you know, we uh, in part one we tore apart the Poison Spider Wraith uh, that used the uh, Freaky Skins graphics. Uh, in this episode today, we are going to go through the rest of the drivetrain uh, and tear down the drivetrain and build up the SSD uh, Diamond Wraith housings. And uh, we will also talk about what we're going to use for our power system. So we've got quite a bit of work to do today, and uh, let's get started right now. So first thing I need to do today is uh, I'm actually going to get these axle housings off of the links. Uh, we used all the original links on this when we installed the GCM metal heads on it. Uh, of course, metal heads uh, you can commonly see on Class 3 competition rigs and stuff like that. They're really heavy duty, huge, big, crazy, you know. So uh, one, of the, one of my favorite things um, about using metal head axles is uh, they seem to look fantastic when you put them together with a tube buggy, custom tube buggy kind of a build, uh, which of course our Matzilla is. And so uh, it was a real toss-up over here whether we were going to leave the metal heads on it and run the uh, Poison Spider uh, setup right on the Matzilla chassis, or were we going to take this opportunity to tear down these uh, great big wide axles and make use of some of the brand new SSD parts that are out. So uh, the SSD stuff went out. <clears throat> where we decided we're going to uh, get rid of the metal heads off of this particular build and uh, we're going to use the Poison Spider stuff to show off um, in a full complete video build how the SSD axles go together so that when you guys get these for your own truck uh, you'll see exactly how to put these together. Uh, thankfully there's uh, everything's a direct fit so I mean that's great. I love it when uh, you know SSD takes the time to think through the product and the end user and uh, what we can all handle for custom work and can't handle and the SSD parts are a direct fit so I just think that's great. I'm going to take off the uh, other two top links here in the front and uh, I should make mention that the only tools that I've been using for this entire thing is a 2.5 millimeter socket driver uh, for socket head screws. I have been using a 2 millimeter socket driver X driver I should say and I've been using a 1.5 millimeter hex driver and that's it uh, everything on this truck fits into that category the only other thing you're gonna need for tools is I would suggest a set of needle nose and uh, of course all these kits all come with the famous four-way wrench which you also will need uh, so I recommend getting one of those in your hand and just keep that stuff on your bench for later got the top links off and a big floppy mess now. I'm going to turn this over and pull the bottom links off so we can split the axles from the rest of the center of the drivetrain. And I will do that right now. I'm banging on this because there's set screws that actually go in from the sides here and they uh, hold in the bottom links into the skid plate. So you can unscrew it pretty much as far as you can but not quite all the way. So it requires a little bit of thumping on the table. I'm really really convinced now that we're not going to use these lower links. Uh, I think they're 100 millimeters or something like that. I'll have to check the, the uh, SSD packaging again for what size they spec on the bottom links. But um, we are, in fact, going to shorten the wheelbase probably an inch and a half, uh, which means using possibly SCX links. Uh, I'm going to check my link stock and see what sizes fit, and I'll be sure to tell you what I end up using. Uh, so that you guys can also put that together on your own. There, it's coming out now. There we 
go. And I've got all my plastic chicken links off. Now what we've got left here is a skid plate with the center tranny on it. This is a brand new unit. There's never been power put in it. It uh, was sitting uh, in our display for a couple of years. Uh, and of course we've got the front metal head axle here with the servo mount on it and it's uh, basically ready to go for action. We'll tear that down and switch it over to an SSD. Now there is one change we're making on this uh, rear housing. Of course the rear, this is a rear metal head that's offset and we are going to switch it with an SSD housing that's centered. So that makes a lot more sense for the buggy look. Uh, having the offset in the front will remain as you can see and uh, everything's in the same essential position so it all these use this uh, SSD uh, diamond housing uses the same mounts and everything so everything just will drop right on and uh, we will not be keeping the axial drive shafts on this build uh, one of the things that I've learned over my many years of scale trucking is um, as good as these are which are an enormous improvement over the typical universal style that Axial used to sell these are great but they still can't handle the amount of horsepower that we intend to use on this very big tire truck uh, small tire trucks yes uh, I use a whole bunch of Axial stock uh, wellbore drive shafts from SEX 10s and stuff. I use them on all kinds of custom scale truck builds, but keep in mind they're also 395 or 4 inch tires or sometimes even smaller. And uh, because the tire is so small, you have a gearing advantage that you don't have with a big tire. You know, the this is just so big that the torque required to turn this is a lot higher than what you would get on a small tire. So the stock drive shafts just aren't going to do it. I'm going to put those on the side and uh, while I'm at it I'm going to pull it pull off the uh, matching part from the transmission. Um, the transmission on these trucks is uh, surprisingly tough under the right circumstances but as we all know the top gear coming from the spur in the stock transmission is a steel gear and then it just goes downhill from there. So the, the center gear in these transmissions is made out of plastic and that is the number one thing to fail on uh, a stock axial transmission. Uh, SCX-10 has the same problem as a Wraith, only I think the Wraith probably explodes the center gear faster because uh, you've got a larger tire on the truck. Let me just see if I can get this drive shaft off. It seems to be very stuck onto the tail shaft of the tranny. There we go. And uh, I like these. Great for scale trucks. I won't use them on the buggy build. Now, I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to keep the stock motor or not. Uh, we intend to run this pr truck probably on a 2 cell 2200. It's not a very big battery. Uh, I'm not going to run it for speed. I am definitely going to run it for low speed and high torque and that means excuse me that means we're going to do a gearing change up here as well as upgrade the transmission uh, center gear uh, for simply for reliability once this is all tucked inside the uh, Matzilla chassis I don't want to have to tear it apart on the trail so that will get upgraded uh, for now let's tear apart this rear axle and uh, get the SSD axle ready and uh, see if we can put the SSD axle together right now and uh, that'll be our project for the day on the driveline is getting the SSD centered rear together and uh, when we put this axle metalhead axle together we just simply took apart the uh, plastic uh, poison wraith truck poison spider wraith we took it apart in its stock form we used all the stock components in this uh, metal head axle for our uh, show truck and we will continue to use all the stock axial components from the poison spider wraith in the SSD axle and that will help us to understand how the fitment is with stock parts and it'll be pretty easy that way 
So I'm going to finish tearing this down and we'll have a look at what SSD has to offer. So we've got the rear axle torn down here. Uh, as you can see, all the stock locker components are there. Uh, we've got the greased up pinion gear here that we've got stuck in the metal head cover. And of course the housing is bare and ready for action somewhere else. Um, this uh, housing has the little bearing caps that go over with a side screw to hold the bearing cap on it's a really easy way to uh, keep the dirt and stuff out of the bearing because the cover has a small enough hole in it that you don't get a whole bunch of dirt in to the drive shaft beside the bearing. It's handy. Uh, the great news about that is that the SSD uh, design uh, uses a lot of the same principles so they have a straight shaft here the same way that the metal head does and your end cap bearings just fit right in. Same way you would do it with uh, another truck. The bearing slides right in. And then of course they have an end cap uh, in the SSD kit and the end cap covers the bearing, keeps the dirt out, keeps the space between the bearing and the axle shaft to a minimum so that uh, you can keep the fishing line and stuff from getting wrapped around your axle. You know how that is. So there's the SSD, has a little tiny cap on it, you can see that there, and uh, that would be great. The cool thing about the SSD kit, of course, is that because you have a centered housing, you need a centered axle, and of course uh, the uh, staff there, design staff at SSD knows exactly what they're doing when it comes to making proper axles, uh, axle shafts. Um, GCM knows something or two, one or two things about metallurgy and I can tell you that these shafts are made out of some good quality steel with a proper hardening process. Uh, they have a good bearing fitment and uh, it's just a real pleasure to actually use a good quality piece of an axle shaft. So thank you SSD. And of course this is a centered housing so both shafts are the same size and uh, you can see that just drops right into the to the center of the housing there and you will have lots of room to get your locker to bite on these shafts and uh, let's get this thing assembled. Um, cool thing is that SSD sends all this fancy hardware uh, to go with it. So there's looks like M2.5s that will hold the bearing caps on and then uh, SSD also gave us uh, all of the rest of the hardware that will attach the link mounts and all that stuff so including a 25 millimeter bolt that will go across the top to uh, hold our links on so that's fantastic as well it's nice to have all the hardware included I like that makes it easy and uh, even though you have the hardware on your previous axle if you're doing a swap uh, you don't have to use your old stuff anymore sometimes the screw heads get rounded off and uh, we don't need those anymore Sometimes the screw heads get rounded off in your axle and so, you know, it's less than desirable for sure. We can uh, actually drop this center gear, this uh, locker unit, right into the SSD housing. And uh, if I figure out now which direction this needs to go, I will put it on this side. There we go. That's... Uh, very easy to get figured out. You just drop that right in. And of course the housing is reversible, right? So you can actually turn this the other way. In case you uh, didn't check your housing uh, direction when you assembled it, you definitely want to do it, be able to flip it, and you can with the SSD housing. That's great. I'm going to drop in this shaft. Do do. Put in my locker shaft, my rear axle shaft, there we go. Drop in my bearing. I'm going to put the end cap on. Oops, wrong one. Hey, that's funny. The uh, 
GCM Metalhead end cap is almost an exact match for the SSD end cap. That's pretty funny. And then we'll drop in these uh, screws. You got to check the hardware pack here for the small, little tiny stubby uh, screws that go in here. If they're too long, of course your screw is going to bind on the axle inside the sh inside the housing. Can't do that. So make sure you find the really short screws that are in the hardware pack. And uh, just drop that on. Snug that up a little bit. I will actually go over this truck just before it's ready for trail and uh, make sure that all the hardware has got Loctite and whatever. But for now, because we're still doing setups, I want to make sure that if I have to take it apart, it's really easy. I'll drop in this other bearing here. And of course the end cap. And the two short little stubby screws. Drop that on there. And I need one more stubby screw for the other side. There we go. I would say these are M3 by 5, I think. That's about the size they look like. So, you might say, uh, you forgot your pinion gear. Not really, because this uh, has a removable cover, but the removable cover is removable from the front of the housing. So, what that means is, when you go to service the axle, you pull off the front cover instead of the rear cover as you would on a metal head or whatever. So uh, now to get the rest of this sorted we have to build up this front cover and in order to do that we got to use the bearings. Uh, SSD did the in my opinion the only smart thing with the Wraith housing and that was to uh, put the larger size bearings in it um, Anybody that's been running a Yeti at high speed with lots of power or Rock 412 or something already knows that you, the little 5x11 pinion bearings really have a hard time keeping up with the horsepower that uh, these new big trucks can give. And so what I think is uh, probably your best option ever is to actually just switch the truck over to a 5x13 bearing. You can't do that very easily. There's a couple of guys that make aftermarket kits for that. But the easiest way is to actually own a housing that has a 5x13 bearing already in it. And I think your options are only um, I think your options are only GCM and SSD, as far as I know. So uh, we're getting this installed. That bearing is almost all the way seated, so I'm going to actually get the pinion on in there and then I'm going to finish it off uh, from the top so it's all lined up excuse the noise there we go so what I actually did there was just pound it on the little black shaft in the center of the pinion uh, gear and the pinion gear is the ultimate way to seat the bearing because you've already got the shaft in line with the two bearings so it's really easy to line that up. You just slide it in and boom. So there we go. I got the bearings in and uh, now we can actually marry this uh, removable third member uh, as it's called and put it on the front of the SSD housing. Boom. And uh, check our pinion mesh here and make sure everything's going to roll. So, nice to be able to check that. Uh, of course, check it before you finish your assembly, otherwise you're in big trouble. Now, there's a whole bunch of hardware here that you can see. Uh, these, all these M2.5s go around the outside of this uh, cover. And what I'm going to do is actually only install the ones at the top. Just hand tight here, just barely tight. Because uh, there's a really kind of nasty design flaw on this design factor, I should say, on this housing that we need to fix before we even put it on the ground. Uh, as you can see, the thing is obviously made for some off-road use. I mean, it's got this 
if, if this was the front, which the front one is just like this, this has lots of clearance. You'll get rocks, you know, go underneath it, logs, trees, whatever, branches. Uh, but on this side, which is the front of our rear diff, this is going to hang up really bad on rocks and stuff, really bad. Uh, good news is that SSD provided a solution as well, which is this Delrin skid plate third member cover. You can see that, and that smooths off the entire bottom. You see it's so round and nice now on the bottom. And so uh, we're going to uh, add the appropriate hardware in the right places in this Delrin unit with these four longer screws that come with it because uh, we have to get all of that installed at the same time. So the top one, two, three, four, five screws can go into the pig and secure the pinion housing onto the main housing but the bottom four screws have to be replaced from the original screw sizes to the Delrin mount screw sizes. And uh, remember that you're screwing this into through a piece of plastic now, so don't over crank the screws. Use the top ones to get everything located and nice. And then the bottom screws that go into the Delrin should be used basically just to secure the cover on and not high torque uh, because you will bust the Delrin open and nobody wants to do that on their fresh Delrin skid plate so great idea uh, I remember uh, years ago somebody actually made a Delrin skid plate for the metal head axles as well just to cover the the uh, pinion cover screws and uh, did a great job on that it looked great so here we go. I've got the third member attached. You can see that beautiful conical Delrin skid plate there, which will do a great job keeping the rocks from catching on the housing. Uh, that's going to be really important for us, especially because we've moved the, the depth of the axle housing from an offset to a centered, so it's farther away from the wheels now as far as it can go. And uh, we have this rear axle housing from SSD ready to install on our Matzilla when the time comes. And uh, I will drop on my link mounts back onto the housing and uh, that will be ready to install. In our next video we will attack the front housing and switch it from our metal head from our Poison Spider Wraith over to the Diamond Offset Front Wraith Axle from SSD and we will see you in part three.